I would like to call today's Board of Trustees meeting to order. Let the record reflect it is Thursday, March 14, 2024, and the time is 10.05 a.m. Board Secretary, would you please call the roll? Trustee Ahuna? Ayo. Trustee Akaka? Ayo. Trustee Akina? Aloha Mike Kapo. Trustee Alapa? Ayo. Trustee Galuteria? Ayo. Trustee Souza? Ayo. Trustee Trask? Aye. Trustee Waihe'e? Present. And Chair Hulu Lindsay? Present. You have nine trustees present. You have quorum. Thank you. Aloha Kako. Welcome to our Board of Trustees meeting. This meeting can be viewed and observed via live stream on OHA's website at www.oha.org slash live stream. Joining us today, we have our board counsel, Robert Klein, and our CEO, Kapohana, Stacy Ferreira. I would like to ask Stacy to introduce any administrative staff joining us today. Aloha Kakahiaka, Chair, Vice Chair, and Trustees. Joining us today, we have COO Casey Brown, CFO Ramona Hink, Interim General Counsel Everett Ota, Interim Senior Legal Counsel Nichi Ozawa, Land Director Tim Wong, Consultant Financial Analyst Sam Chung, IT Manager Tiger Lee, IT Solutions Technician Kelsey Wade, and IT Systems Administrator Arlene Aguinaldo. Mahalo for having us. Thank you. First on the agenda is community concerns and celebrations. Lehua, do we have anyone signed up to speak? Yes, the first person is Zuri Aki. Zuri. Hello, Chair, members of the Board of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. My name is Zuri Kaapanaki, and I'm a Native Hawaiian beneficiary of OHA. You know me well. Mindful of your time as fiduciaries for a trust benefiting the Native Hawaiian people, I would much rather be testifying on the celebrations portion of this agenda item. However, I find myself being dragged back here to voice my concerns as a Native Hawaiian pro professional advocate. I'm testifying with the intent to bring to your attention two concerns that I have with the present administration and direction of OHA that I believe exacerbates the plight of Native Hawaiians contrary to OHA's foundational purpose. Uh, <clears throat> OHA's foundational purpose to ever seek the betterment conditions of Native Hawaiians. I will share these concerns while using my own firsthand experiences to, to illuminate these issues that I believe go far beyond impacting myself alone. My first concern is that there's a high degree of incompetence within the upper administration that abuses this trust to protect that incompetence. For over a half a year, the administration employed an interim HR director whose own qualifications likely fell gravely short of that role. And during that lengthy period of time, this individual made critical decisions that negatively, negatively impacted an untold amount of staff, potential hires, and beneficiaries. You see, when my employment was terminated here in December, just before Christmas, I was told that it was for being unethical and dishonest. I took that as a serious insult to my own my own integrity because I have gone through that great lengths uh, to be honest, brutally honest, if need be. When I challenged the CEO and interim HR director on the grounds that they were basing the decision on a lie told by their brand new director of advocacy, who they hired as hiring committee members, an individual who had a standing formal complaint against for highly unethical and unprofessional behavior. I was told that despite my challenge and the fact that the truth was never investigated, my employment would be terminated. Trustees, since leaving OHA, Thursday mornings are when I take my three young children out to immerse themselves in Aina and the culture of the Kupuna, which I had neglected for years, dedicating myself to OHA's advocacy services. I do not want to be here. But I was told that I cannot collect unemployment at this time because OHA asserts that I was fired from misconduct, when in truth it was a cover-up. What would you do if injustice stood in the way of your own family survival? How many other staff have faced the same abuses? How many are currently experiencing them? The crux of my concern here, once again, is that if OHA is a powerful vehicle for the capacity to transport the Lahu out from the muck and mire of unaddressed historical injustices, then it is being taken for a joyride. I venture to guess that you're often being blindfolded and told that we're going somewhere great, but every time you peek out from under it, it just looks like we're going in circles. My second and final concern 
stems from my first and specifically focuses on OHA's organizational structure around advocacy. Article 12, Section 6 of the Hawaii State Constitution established this board to formulate policy relating to the affairs of Native Hawaiians. Hawaii Revised Statutes, Chapter 10.3 provides OHA's purpose, brimming with the thrust of advocacy. One of OHA's fundamental principles, one of its fundamental roles is to provide advocacy on behalf of Native Hawaiians. OHA's all his advocacy division is supposed to be the tip of the spear, the serrated niho on the leo mano. It is the weapon that we use to fight for the betterment and conditions of Native Hawaiians, and this weapon is now blunted, broken, and wielded by people who keep mistaking it for a spoon to feed themselves. I first served as an old public policy advocate in 2016 on what was undoubtedly, as you many of you know, the strongest iteration of advocacy. When I was onboarded as public policy manager in 2022, OHA's advocacy division was in ruin. I rebuilt advocacy even while my hiring recommendations, strong advocates, and beneficiaries were constantly being rejected by the interim HR director. Now, I suspect OHA's advocacy division is currently dancing with ruin, but they'd rather have you focus on the song than the dance. On March 1st, one week before social media blew up about a foreign developer trying to push luxury development in Punalu'u, one of Hawaii Island's more renowned black sand beaches, I notified OHA's advocacy division about the potential issue and the need to testify on a critical SMA permit needed by the developer. This information was brought to the attention of the current public policy manager and director of advocacy, but OHA failed to provide testimony uh, on this issue. I had been tracking this issue when I was the public policy manager and I had public policy advocates focusing on providing much needed advocacy in Hawaii, Maui, and Kauai counties where advocacy was virtually non-existent. When the director of advocacy was onboarded, she removed and forbade public policy from our ongoing advocacy efforts on Hawaii Island. OHA's absence on this very visible issue is a result of that directive and incompetence. Trustees, one competent manager and three brand new advocates crushed the 2023 legislative session while being highly responsive to the advocacy services required by OHA's beneficiaries in every sphere of governance, including at the federal level. This iteration of advocacy doesn't look anything like that. I don't want to use this example to prop myself up, but rather I want to illustrate what a zealous advocate can do with limited resources, and OHA has a lot of resources. Trustees, I challenge OHA's upper administration to do better. I challenge these individuals to do the necessary work that OHA's beneficiaries require or to step aside so someone passionate and capable can do it. I challenge them to stop hiding behind the excuse that they lack capacity, giving themselves pay raises and pats on the back while the law police still suffers. Finally, Trustee Trask, I appreciate your inferences during the last BAE meeting about the quality of my charisma and good looks, but everyone who shares my sentiments aren't my girlfriend. Trustees, mahalo nui lo for your time. Lehua, do we have anyone else to give uh, community concerns? Yes. Um, our next speaker is Jermaine Myers. Okay, please call Jermaine. Can you? Chair, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Just wanted to test the sound. Aloha, trustees, staff, and lahui. My name is Jermaine Myers. I'm an OHA beneficiary for beneficiary advocacy and empowerment. I'm also a Nanakuli Hawaiian homestead lessee. OHA paid for and completed the CLA and Plant Moran audit reports as its first steps in stopping and eliminating fraud, waste, and abuse of OHA's state and trust funds. I believe OHA's next step to stop and eliminate fraud, waste, and abuse is for OHA to financially support OHA beneficiaries and employees with the filing of lawsuits for false claim act violations. At minimum, OHA should advocate for the dissemination of information to beneficiaries and employees regarding the false act claim, uh, false claim act. What is the False Claim Act? It's a whistleblower law that allows private citizens to sue, quitam, any individuals, companies, or other entities that are defrauding the government and recover damages and penalties on the government's behalf. The statute also provides whistleblowers financial rewards, 15% to 25% of damages, as well as job protection against retaliation. I will email to all of you the federal Title 31 and state HRS 661-21, 
to 661-31 that contain the federal and state laws concerning the False Claim Act. The state statute defines eight types of violations. I will share in layman terms two types of violations. Number one, the presentation of a false claim for payment. And number two, the use of a false statement to get a claim paid. Claim means any request or demand, whether under a contract or otherwise, for money or property, and whether or not the state has title to the money or property that is presented to an officer, employee, or agent of the state, or is made to a contractor, grantee, or other recipient, if the money or property is to be spent or used on the state's behalf, or to advance a state program or interest, and if the state provides or has provided any portion of the money or property that is requested or demanded, or will reimburse the contractor, grantee, or other recipient for any portion of the money or property that is requested or demanded. In other words, monies that were paid by OHA to a contractor or grantee that submitted an invoice or statement for payment of services or products that evidence shows these services or products were never received in full as paid for. Payments made for non-deliverables. To bring further perspective to the significance of this act, at the federal level, settlements and judgments under the False Claims Act exceeded $2.68 billion in the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2023. This was the highest settlements and judgments in a single year. Recovery since 1986, when Congress substantially strengthened the Civil False Claim Act, now total more than $75 billion. Again, trustees, please protect OHA and trusts and the trust and state taxpayer funds. Support and advocate beneficiaries and employees that have evidence of false claim violations. Since I have time, I just heard the testimony of Zuri Aki. I will email to all of you his Facebook posting about his previous employer who fired him Kuhil Lewis, where he tagged across Facebook, Kuhil Lewis is an asshole. I will also post all of his, send you all of his posts related to this and all of his claims and assist and deceased letters by CNHA. Kea kua pu, God bless all of you. Next on the agenda is item 3A. We have somebody else. Oh, we have another uh, person wanting to do community concerns. Our next speaker is Luann Paparito. Go ahead, Luann. Thanks, everyone. You can go ahead and bypass me. Thank you, everybody. Aloha. Where are you, Luann? Oh, I, I asked to be bypassed. I'm sorry, can you guys hear me? Okay, next on the agenda is item 3A. Before we recuse ourselves into executive session, I want to announce that we will return to open session and continue the live stream once we are done. Lehua, do we have anyone signed up to speak on any of the executive session items? Um, we have Jermaine Myers that signed up to speak on this item. Okay. Jermaine? Um, 
chair and trustees, I provided my community concerns, which in respect also will be my testimony for today's agenda item. Mahalo. Thank you. Next, Luann. Okay, uh, trustees, may I get a motion to recuse ourselves into executive session pursuant to HRS section 92-5? So move. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Trustee Ahuna? Discussion? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just want to know, uh, we're supposed to be approving every single executive session minute uh, from what I'm looking at in the executive policy manual. Um, I haven't received the one yet to review and we approve the open, uh, we usually approve open session minutes, but I think we're supposed to be approving the executive session minutes prior to the next executive session. And so I just want to make sure that we have that information because I've been here for almost a year and we haven't had it yet. So is that being prepared or... Um, they are being prepared. Be prepared. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, roll call vote for moving into executive session. Trustee Ahuna. Aye. Trustee Kaka. Aye. Trustee Kina. Aye. Trustee Alapa. Aye. Trustee Galuteria. Trustee Souza. Aye. Trustee Trous. Aye. Trustee Waihe. Yes. And Chair Hulu Lindsay. Yes. We have nine yes. We are moving into executive session. 